Hey everyone, Spencer Hawes here with the Niche Pursuits podcast. And today you're going to hear a story of Mark who has built an aquarium website up to $20,000 a month in revenue and his traffic is somewhere north of 300,000 visitors a month. It's a great story with a lot of great strategies, so you're going to want to listen to the full interview. Uh, But I wanted to give you a heads up that somebody else is conducting the interview, somebody that you have not seen for a very long time if you have followed along with niche pursuits. I've actually got Samara. She was um, a student, if you will, back with Niche Site Project 3. Uh, She built a niche site along with me, and so she was on some really old coaching calls many years ago. Um, She actually does a lot of written interviews for Niche Pursuits. She reaches out and does um, a lot of written interviews with entrepreneurs that we publish on Niche Pursuits. She's run across a couple of people that she wanted to interview um, over video, and, and the people that she was reaching out to wanted to do a full interview, and so I allowed her to do that. And so you're going to hear um, her interview with Mark uh, that she conducted uh, because it's a great story. She found this person, and so she was able to interview them, and so I wanted to share that fully here on the podcast. So with that, enjoy the interview. Hey, everyone. It's Spencer Hawes here, founder of the Niche Pursuits podcast. So I recently read a Twitter thread asking about the most underrated strategy in SEO. One of the most common answers given was internal link building. The reason? Well, sometimes people put so much emphasis on external links, they forget that not only do internal links provide relevancy and SEO benefits, but that Google actually encourages you to build internal links. Now I get it. Building internal links can often feel time consuming and boring. And that's why I created Link Whisper. Link Whisper is a powerful WordPress plugin that makes building internal links so much faster and easier. You can quickly get relevant internal link suggestions as you write, and with the simple check of a box, add one or multiple internal links to your articles. And perhaps my favorite time saver is the ability to see how many internal links all my articles have, and to quickly get new internal link suggestions to articles I want to boost in Google. With comprehensive internal link reporting and the ability to add links with the simple check of a box, I can't even imagine going back to building internal links manually. Link Whisper is by far the most powerful, effective, and easiest to use internal link building tool out there. Give it a try, and if you don't agree, I'll give you your money back, no questions asked. In fact, for podcast listeners only, I'm offering a $15 off discount. Just go to linkwhisper.com and use discount code PODCAST at checkout to save $15. So as the creator of Link Whisper, I might be a little biased, but I highly recommend that you head over to linkwhisper.com today to check it out. Again, that's linkwhisper.com, and be sure to use discount code PODCAST at checkout. Thanks again. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Niche Pursuits podcast. I'm here with Mark Valderrama, and Mark is the brains behind the website AquariumStoreDepot.com. And so every month, Mark's site is getting around 300,000 visitors, and he's making $20,000. Thanks for coming on the podcast, Mark. Thank you very much. Um, So let's start at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about your website. The website. Okay, so it started back in... 2017, I believe. And it was originally going to be an e-commerce site. So to give you a background on myself, I've been in the aquatics industry since I was 11. Uh, I started at a very young age. I had this bright idea with my brother to have a clownfish tank with anemones and we got gifted an aquarium and we just started from there. And then as soon as I was legally able to work, I started working at a pet store and at... um, at aquatic department, so I used to maintain a lot of fish tanks, and just kept doing that and doing that throughout college, and then just kept tanks throughout the whole time. So I've been in the industry um, for over 25 years at this point. Okay. So the e-commerce idea was, okay, I'm going to start an e-com site, I'm just going to drop ship a bunch of stuff. I had several suppliers I signed up right away because they knew about me, and was doing that for a little bit, and then Amazon Two Day 
came about and pretty much ruined the business. So okay. I had to pivot. And at the time, I was starting to get into blogging and started to write a lot of my notes down just on my own experience on fish keeping. But I didn't know anything about SEO at the time. They were just jambled notes. And then I got more and more um, knowledge about that through a course that I got from another SEO named uh, Ryan Stewart. I learned more about outreach and I learned more about content creation and just took it from there. And then shortly after him, I found another person named Matt Digity. And Matt Digity has this course called the Affiliate Lab, and the Affiliate Lab walks you through a lot of different ways of growing an affiliate site. And that's how I got really into affiliate marketing. I started dabbling into it after the e-commerce piece started going away. Mm-hmm. Because I had all this content. I had I had visitors at the time. I think I had about 20,000 visitors at the time. Okay. I said, I got to do something with this because people aren't buying my stuff, but they're looking at my content and they're commenting and they're sending me emails with various questions they have. So they're engaged. So what I do with this, and so I just started dropping some Amazon affiliate links. I think I made, I think I made $70 the first month that I did it. And I said, okay, that's, that's not bad. Let me see what else I can do. Cause I just tested a few pages and it made money. And then it just grew and grew from there. And at one point I thought to myself, okay, if this pays for my car note, I'm happy. And then it got to the point where I said, okay, this thing might pay for for my mortgage. And then I started paying for my mortgage. I said, okay, wow, that's crazy. This thing might make more than my full-time job. And then I started making more than my full-time job. I said, okay, this is really crazy. Wow. <laughs> what do I start doing with this? That's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so what year did you originally create your site? 2017, I believe. Okay. And so when you originally started it, you didn't really have a background in SEO. You just kind of learned as you, mm-hmm. as you went along. Yeah, I learned as I went. Yeah. Okay. That's fantastic. And so today, is it still um, e-com and information, or how is it structured at the moment? We are mostly informational and have, we still have a little bit of remnants of the dropshipping piece. We just don't do very much. There's, I think, two or three products that we actually do dropship. And we dropship them because nobody really sells them. Uh, nobody, okay. nobody in general, fish stores or through online suppliers really sell them because they're out in the UK or some other country like that. Okay, so that part still functions. Yeah, that part still functions. Okay, um, any bespoke products that you've ever worked on? Um, you have to explain to me what a bespoke product is. So have you created your own products that you felt there was like a market need? Oh yeah, yeah, I've done that before, yes. Yes, I used to have one of the first uh, algae turf scrubbers. And that, that what that is, is it's a, it's a device that grows algae with in a isolated area in the aquarium and it what it does it sucks up a lot of the nutrients like phosphates and nitrates okay. and it's really good for creating a self-sustaining tank um, created that but then the supplier or the manufacturer who used to do it with me he went out of business and so I didn't have anybody to really make it and I just stopped doing that after that okay because at that time okay. I think there's like three or four players and I said there's not really a point in me finding a manufacturer when I have all these other people I can sell with right right Okay, that sounds like a lot of work as well to kind of create your own product and find the supplier yes. and, and sort that out. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I also had aquarium lights for a little bit. Um, that was good, but then COVID killed it because the factory that was working on it lost a, a number of their workers and they went out of business. Oh, no. Yeah, it was, it was ugly. COVID was pretty ugly for that part of the business. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, so mostly fo- uh, focusing on informational content. Yes. Okay. Um, what kind of affiliate programs do you work with? We have about a dozen affiliate partners. Okay. So they're anything from a general place like a Amazon or a Petco to specific private partnerships. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm the only niche site on the internet that has an agreement with a partner like Saltwater Aquarium because okay. uh, they will only do business with people who actually meet them in person. And that's mm-hmm. been... The key to a number of partnerships I have, I have, I have a few other private partnerships that I'm not really comfortable disclosing okay. <laughs> because then other competitors will find out, but um, I, I'm comfortable with Saltwater Aquarium because he just won't deal with anybody unless they meet him in person, and I can't imagine many competitors actually wanting to meet someone in person to sign an affiliate agreement. Right. 
So, so how does one go about getting a, sort of an exclusive partnership with, with someone? I meet them at trade shows. I actually go to trade shows, and people know who I am, and I just talk to them, tell them about my site. They look at my metrics, and usually they're surprised because a lot of the times I have more traffic than them. Really? <laughs> nice. Yeah. That is very interesting. Do you often go to trade shows? Do you still go to trade shows? Or I still go. kind of a strategy yeah. in the beginning? You're still going? I still go, yeah. I mean, it's a business write-off, and I get to meet people, so why not? <laughs> nice, nice. This is a, like a true passion project, right? This is something yes. you've been doing for a long time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, people know me, and um, I want to get to the point where I can be a keynote speaker. I just haven't gotten there yet because for a lot, for the longest of time, I didn't really put myself out there. Okay. Um, for a number of years, the website was a faceless website, which is what you normally see with many affiliate sites because most people would just put in a fake avatar or it'll be like an AI image, and it's not even a real person, and half the time they're backed by VC money. And I didn't do that. I didn't put myself out there for a while because I had a full-time job. And the full-time job was very restrictive on somebody who makes money on the side. Okay. So I didn't make it public. Okay. Until recently where I stopped caring because I, it now it makes more money than my full-time. It doesn't even, it doesn't even matter at this point. Okay. Do you still have a full-time job? Yeah, I still do, and it's extremely flexible, and they and they appreciate it. Uh, they actually support what I'm doing. <laughs> really? So they know about your website now, obviously. They know about it, yeah. They know about it now. They don't really care. It's more like at this point, um, whenever you're ready to leave or whenever we don't need you, like we're just mutually part, and we're both okay with that. Okay, cool. So and I still get my work done, so they don't they don't care. Right. I mean, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and this has basically driven your your shift towards kind of becoming the person behind the website. Yes. Okay. Yes. It also allows me to be a lot more, um, I guess you could say, um, reckless with how I invest money, because mm -hmm. I have a full time. And at the end of the day, it's like, if I tell myself, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run out of loss today because I want to invest more in the business, I can do that. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have that security. Yeah. Yeah. So, what would be the advantage to being a keynote speaker? Uh, just more brand awareness. Okay. More brand awareness, people know more who I am. I mean, I, I do have some books that I've worked on in the past on the industry. So there's two books uh, written by Wiley Publications. It's called the, I think it's called The Complete Idiots or Complete Dummies Guide to Saltwater and Freshwater Crimes. I'm the technical editor for both of them. Mm -hmm. So I work with the authors on both those books to get those revised for the third edition. Okay. So I've done that before. Um, I could probably write a book at this point if I wanted to. I just haven't really gotten the time. Um, right now, I'm mostly looking at diversification because uh, there's a lot of big changes on the um, search engine algorithm. Okay. And with a lot of those changes, it just puts me more into diversifying and just securing what uh, money I make now and enhancing it. Okay. So what do you mean? What kind of changes are taking place and what is that? How is that driving your... your there's your a lot of um, algorithm changes on search, search intent. Mm -hmm. So I've seen a number of my competitors just get completely smashed by Google and then exit the business or sell to another site. Wow. Yeah, it's it's been pretty crazy. I think the last six months has been very unstable for for many websites. I mean, okay. e even outside of affiliate. I mean, there's some e-commerce sites that have gotten smashed. Okay. So your plans to diversify, what does that include? Uh, YouTube is one of them. So right now we're on YouTube and have about, I think, 5,700 subscribers at this point. Mm -hmm. Only been doing it about three months now. Um, okay. Really focused on it, so it's it's growing fairly fast. Um, obviously, it doesn't make as much as blogging, uh, but it's another good avenue. So my whole thought of my whole thought was, well, if it makes twenty or thirty percent of what the blog makes, then I'm pretty happy there. Right. And then I'm starting to look into Instagram, but Instagram is going to be more of a personal brand project. That's going to be me more diving into coaching and uh, course creation later down the road. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. And so is your YouTube channel monetized? Yes. Okay. And how often do you publish content to your blog and to your uh, YouTube channel? And how does that work? We usually do about 15 to 30 pieces of content a month, depending on how busy I am with the blog content. And for the YouTube channel, I think we publish about anywhere from 10 to 15 videos a month. Okay. Okay. And so who, who's we? 
I mean, is there is there a whole team of people yeah, working behind you in the room to the side that we can't see, or how, yes. how, how, there's, how there's a whole, I have a whole bunch of VAs, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I, have, VAs, I have a few mm-hmm. writers who have aquarium experience, and they write for me, and I, I, I review everything. Uh, the YouTube production team, we have a script writer who goes through my blog, writes the script, I review the script, and then after the script, I have several voiceover actors. They do the voiceover, and then we have an editor who runs the whole thing. I tried doing voiceover before, but I suck at it, and it takes forever. Okay. So I, I, I work with a mentor who's really good on uh, YouTube channels, and he told me in the beginning, he's like, hey, you probably should try it faceless until you grow big enough where it doesn't matter and you can go faced, given the okay. amount of time it takes you to uh, voice over the content, which makes sense to me. It's like, uh, it doesn't make sense for me to go spend like a whole day uh, recording content when the YouTube site itself is in its infancy. Right. Okay. So that may, might, might come a little bit down the road. Yeah. Yeah. That's the okay. hope is I get big enough where I can start doing live streams, but we're not there yet. Okay. So that might be in the future for you. Yeah. Okay. So you oversee everything, but you have a team of kind of virtual assistants and writers and, and other people kind of working on your, your content for both channels. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Um, are you using social media at all? You said you're going to get into Instagram, but do you use any other form of social media? Outside of YouTube, I don't. Okay. Okay. So um, tell us about your earnings. What's your what's your how much how much are you making from your your aquarium storm depot? We go anywhere from twelve to twelve to twenty thousand a month, depending on the season. So higher season we'll go over twenty, and lower season we go a little. We, we dip to the low five figures in a month. Okay. Okay. And you said you're getting about 300,000 visitors yes. per month? 300,000 visitors a month right now. And growing. And growing, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your content creation process? Do you, are you doing keyword research? I mean, how much content do you have published at this point? I mean, since you've been around for so many years, you probably have a ton of articles. And so what, is it, what does it look like at the moment? I have over 400 pieces of content that I've written so far. Okay. And content creation at this point, I don't even use, I don't even use Ahrefs at this point. Okay. I used to for keyword research, but I've gotten to the point now where I can pretty much write about anything. So if I see a trending topic, say on YouTube or from a competitor, and I, I think to myself, hey, that might be something to write, or I just come across something that. Um, I'm doing myself. Like I had a friend of mine who uh, accidentally killed their betta fish because they forgot to change the water with water treatment. Okay. And so they put in pure tap water and ended up killing the betta fish. And I wrote a blog article on that. So I do that kind of stuff now. And I'll do like a little bit of keyword research and say, okay, what's the target keyword for this? And then I'll just do that. And then I'm doing a whole bunch of um, care sheets just to uh, spread out the topical authority. Mm-hmm. Um, since there's a lot of creature, there's a lot of aquatic creatures that people keep, and I've never really written much about how to specifically take care of the fish. I've mostly okay. written about how to take care of the tank and what equipment to look into and what makes a good piece of equipment, what doesn't, or even the history of it. But now I'm working on, okay, so if you want this fish, here's what you need to do. So I'm doing a lot oh, of that right now. Okay, so there's probably, I mean, a whole lot of possibilities there if you're going to talk about different types of creatures. Yes, yes. And even on the YouTube channel, I think once we cover most of the blog content, we'll probably get into more type of viral content, such as, so here's these interesting ocean facts. Like, we did one about eels a while back, which I'm surprised didn't do very well, because okay. I, I figured it would have gone viral, because I thought it was really funny, but it just never did. I, I didn't understand why. Maybe we just weren't big enough when we published it. Okay. Yes, people love to hear about, about eels. I don't know. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe down the yeah. road it will it will pick up some traffic. Yeah. It's it's a um, funny subject that may not be appropriate for this podcast, but it's really funny. Okay, I'm gonna have to check it out. Okay. <laughs> um, so, do you address the same topics on the blog as on YouTube? Do you repurpose your content on the blog for YouTube? Or are you kind of uh, appealing to different kinds of publics on the two channels? We mostly republish the blog content on YouTube right now. Okay. Every now and then, I'll find something on YouTube that I haven't covered on the blog and I'll make a video on it and then I'll just link it to one of my blog posts and I embed it in there. 
Mm-hmm. But generally, I would say 80% of the time it's off the blog right now because we have so much blog content. Right. So it's really easy to just go into the blog and we already know the search intent because they're, they're ranking on Google. Right. And we just make the we just make the blog or we just make the YouTube video off it. Okay. Do you have an email list that you kind of promote your content to? I do. Um, I don't really work in it that much. I think we have. It's not that big. It's only 5,500 subscribers on on email. It took me a while with email because I I was conflicted about it because I didn't know what to do with it, right? And it gets pretty expensive when you have a big email list. Mm -hmm. And you have to really justify the RI. But then I found this one uh, vendor called Flowdesk, which I really like because Flowdesk has an unlimited cap on how many subscribers you can have. Mm-hmm, okay. So what I did is I just loaded up all my email subscribers and actually started taking it seriously once I knew that I wasn't going to get charged for having extra subscribers. So I, I would have had a lot more email subscribers. I just wasn't growing it until I found Flowdesk because I didn't really see the point in paying so much. Okay. Because I was using Claveo before, and I think Claveo with that many subscribers was over $100 a month. And I didn't really see the point in paying that much if I wasn't making $100 a month promoting emails. Right, of course. Okay, and what's the price for Flowdesk? How is this, how is this working out? Uh, it's, I think, 39 a month, and mm-hmm. it's unlimited users and unlimited emails. Okay. Okay, that sounds like a better deal. Way better deal, especially once you have a really big subscriber list. Yeah. So are, is your goal to kind of grow it in the future and, and monetize it? Probably. I'm just, I don't really see the point right now. I'm still, okay. I'm still conflicted on it. I'm just growing it. Um, I get daily subscribers every day. I just don't know what to do with it. Okay. I, that's the one thing I haven't figured out is what to do with emails. Okay. That's another way to divers- diversify if you're looking yes. to kind of, yeah. Yes, I just haven't figured it out. Okay. Hey, everyone. It's Spencer Hawes here, founder of the Niche Pursuits podcast. So I recently read a Twitter thread asking about the most underrated strategy in SEO. One of the most common answers given was internal link building. The reason? Well, sometimes people put so much emphasis on external links, they forget that not only do internal links provide relevancy and SEO benefits, but that Google actually encourages you to build internal links. Now, I get it. Building internal links can often feel time-consuming and boring. And that's why I created Link Whisper. Link Whisper is a powerful WordPress plugin that makes building internal links so much faster and easier. You can quickly get relevant internal link suggestions as you write, and with the simple check of a box, add one or multiple internal links to your articles. And perhaps my favorite time saver is the ability to see how many internal links all my articles have, and to quickly get new internal link suggestions to articles I want to boost in Google. With comprehensive internal link reporting and the ability to add links with the simple check of a box, I can't even imagine going back to building internal links manually. Link Whisper is by far the most powerful, effective, and easiest to use internal link building tool out there. Give it a try and if you don't agree, I'll give you your money back, no questions asked. In fact, for podcast listeners only, I'm offering a $15 off discount. Just go to linkwhisper.com and use discount code PODCAST at checkout to save $15. So as the creator of Link Whisper, I might be a little biased, but I highly recommend that you head over to linkwhisper.com today to check it out. Again, that's linkwhisper.com, and be sure to use discount code PODCAST at checkout. Thanks again. Have you ever had uh, an issue with a Google algorithm update? I have. Tell us about it. Uh, I've been hit twice before and recovered successfully twice. Okay. Typically, the issues that I've had had to do with um, headers was the big thing. Okay. So what happened was, because I use FAQ section, the keywords would get spammed in the headers because that's what FAQs tell you to write. They tell you to write on the subject and put an H3 on it. And that's a big no-no with the uh, algorithm updates. So what happened is every article that I had a FAQ section on got completely dropped out of Google for a few months. And then I had to go in and update 400 pieces of articles, or 400 articles. And then once I did that, everything was fine. Okay. Did you have to go back and remove the FAQs? No, I just edited them. Okay. 
No, I just edited it to get rid of the primary keywords and then everything came back up. Okay. So that's one Google Rhythm update. Uh, that so, was the so second. Google that was zero, the second one. Mark one. All right. That so was the now... second. That was the second one. The first okay. one. The first one. I don't even know why. The first one. I was just down for half a month and then it came back. All right. I I didn't do anything. I just I just wrote more content. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Stay the course. Stay yeah. the course. Yeah. Pray that it will work out. I mean, those are all good strategies. Pretty much. <laughs> right. Um. So, have you done any active link building for your website? I have before, yeah, yeah. So what I used to do my I used to do my own outreach based on Ryan Stewart's uh, course. He used to have a course called White Hat Link Building, mm -hmm. which was all about how to get guest posts and digital PR. So I've done some digital PR in the past. Um, I have a writer now who does a lot of digital PR for me now. Uh, since since I since I am my own brand, it's so much it's much easier for him to do PR for me. Okay. So that that's why I also don't believe in. Um, faceless content or faceless mm -hmm. uh, websites mm -hmm. because I, I personally feel it's harder to do digital PR if you're not a person on the site. I mean, you can right. do it if you have a fake LinkedIn. I've been seeing that before. People set up fake LinkedIn's, they get fake followers, and then they do out outreach with a fake profile. But it's just not a thing that I do. It's, it's, it's very gamey. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, let's be authentic, right? Yeah. I mean, even yeah. on my YouTube channel, I'm actually on my YouTube channel on the, on the intro. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been on some videos too, but I just don't think I look that good on camera yet. So maybe with some training, as I make more money on the side, I'll, I'll get some training. Or I'll probably be better once I do a course because I'll feel a lot more, more in my person to actually be on camera after that. Right, more confident. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, any any major links that you've scored um, in your several years in business? The biggest set of links I got was. Done but on my own, and it was during the pandemic because I used to sell a product called chloroquine phosphate, which is like which is it's this wonder drug in the aquarium industry. It it can cure a lot of different serious ailments for marine animals, mm -hmm. and I procured it from a from a lab, um, and so I do is buy a kilo because nobody nobody can use an entire kilo. It take you like a year. Or over a year to actually use the thing. So I'd buy a kilo and I separate them into little batches that I would sell them to people, right? Mm -hmm. And I had a I had a guaranteed uh, purity analysis and all that stuff in the lab, so it was it was very legit. And what happened was our last president um, made a statement saying that chloroquine was being researched as a, as a possible cure for COVID or a treatment for cure for COVID, right? Well, there's three different types of chloroquine, and chloroquine phosphate is one of them. And the one he was the one he was mentioning he was mentioning was hydroxychloroquine. But when everyone heard chloroquine, they thought to themselves, "Oh, I got to get my hands on this chloroquine stuff." And chloroquine phosphate is so common. Let's go get that. And so they looked at my site, and I had a bunch of people message me saying, "Hey, I want to use it for my grandpa or my grandma who's got COVID. Can you sell it to me?" And I would tell them, no, I'm not going to sell this to you because we use this for fish. We don't use this for humans. If you want, if you want to get this for humans, you need to go get a prescription from a doctor. Because so the, the purity. So the wrong chloroquine. So it's the wrong. Yeah, wrong it's the wrong chloroquine. Yeah. It's the wrong chloroquine, and also it's almost pure active ingredient. So if anyone took it, they would overdose, which is exactly what happened to this guy in Arizona. Okay. He ended up procuring it from somebody who was selling it. He sold it to some to a person. And that person ingested it, thinking it would cure COVID, and he ended up dying because it's. If you buy the right uh, chloroquine substance, it's like 98, 99% pure. Yeah. So he overdosed and he died. Mm -hmm. And what happened is it became big news about this Arizona guy, and a BBC reporter reached out to me because they saw that I was selling this site, or so they saw that I was selling this product. And she contacted me and she said, Hey, Mark. Um, so I know I'm this reporter from BBC. I'm looking into this uh, this death of this guy in Arizona who, um, what do you call, uh, died from ingesting Clargan. Did you sell it to him? So she I mean, she gave very accusatory. It's like, did you sell it to him, or did you, uh, or have you inflated your price because uh, people are selling it for ridiculous amounts? I said no, and absolutely not. I don't really see the point in price gouging people. It doesn't make any sense to me. Right. 
And she's like, well, I don't know if you know about this. I didn't know about this at the time. I didn't know that somebody died about this. Because mm-hmm. uh, generally I don't really follow... I don't really take a lot of time to follow mainstream news because my my full-time job that's literally what they do okay. they are a peer group and they work with fortune 1000 executives to um to talk about really hard current events and someone dying from Clarkin wasn't on their radar but we we're talking about a lot of other things during the pandemic mm-hmm. and she talked to me about it and i said okay wow i didn't know some guy died about it died from it she's like yeah we're doing she's like we're doing um like can you tell us more about it and he's like have you gotten people contacting you i said yeah people have and i tell him it's not for human consumption and she told me he's like well what have they told you and i said well i got some really interesting emails do you really want to know she's like yeah i want to know i was like well i've gotten death threats about oh my god people who've been wanting to buy a clark and i refuse it I, I refuse to sell it and then they start sending me death threats saying that they want to kill me because i'm being evil and not selling them to to them to help their gra- grandpa save their life and she she told me oh, well i want to see these emails and so i sent the emails to her she looked over at them and she told me okay so here's what's going on we're doing a msnbc nightly special and it's going to be an expert panel, and it's all about misinformation on the internet. And we really love to have you as part, as one of the guests on the panel. And so that's how I ended up on MS, MSNBC Nightly News. It's you can still find it on YouTube. Okay. And um, that interview got me so many backlinks. I <laughs> was featured on BuzzFeed. I was featured on Lifehacker. I I went on Slate, a few other things, and it was just crazy. I probably got about. 20 or so very very powerful links from it oh my god that is insane yeah oh and then after that uh shopify tried to ban me because i was selling a pharmaceutical in their mind mm-hmm. and so they asked me to take down the product or they were going to ban me completely at shopify and so i ended up leaving shopify i went to woocommerce and then i updated the product page into a blog post and then I talked all about that experience about Shopify trying to ban me and what chloric and phosphate is and all the links to those articles because originally all those articles were leading to my product right because uh-huh. they kept talking about my product and they, they kept linking to me right so I just redirected it to the, the blog post and the blog post talks all about how chloric and isn't a cure for or chloric and phosphate isn't a cure for COVID now that and it talks, is about, a and it talks about how I was banned and everything, yeah. That is that is a good link building <laughs> story. That is crazy. Do you still sell this stuff on your on your on your No, blog? I stopped I stopped selling it because it's a pain in the butt. Okay. It's a pain in the butt and also because it's been a pain of butt in the butt since COVID. Mm-hmm. So since COVID it's been very hard to procure it. And it got to the point where the labs were saying, Well, because people have been using it for human consumption, we don't want to sell anymore because we're gonna get in trouble. So unless you're a veterinarian now, we don't want to sell it to you. Yeah. And since I'm I mean, not a veterinarian, I don't get it, so it Okay. Works. Well, that might be a safer bet for everybody. Yeah. My God. Yeah. It's just most people can't get it from a veterinarian because most veterinarians don't really care about fish at the end of the day. Okay. They're not going to... A veterinarian is not going to see your, your, your goldfish typically because he's sick. It's your, your, your fish is likely going to die before you see the, the veterinarian. It's right. just the way things work. Unless you have a massive prize-winning koi or these foot-long cichlids a veterinarian usually isn't going to go see your fish it's just mm-hmm. it's just the way it, the way it works okay that is a crazy story mark <laughs> thanks i love it um any other i mean i mean what link could compare to that but have you had any other kind of big link building wins i try to remember if i had other ones Oh, yeah, I did. I, I mean, I had an interview on Huffington Post a while back. Um, okay. It was right before Tanked got canceled. And before what got canceled? Before Tanked. It, it's, a, mm-hmm. it's a reality show that talks about um, custom aquariums and these guys in Vegas okay. who make these really cool aquariums. <laughs> yeah, and they make them for celebrities and things like that. Cool. Um, but I got, I got one about that during fi- when Finding Dory came out. Mm-hmm. Because I, re- I reached out to them, actually, and I said, hey, um, why don't you reach out for you? reach out to you guys because I remember when I worked at the fish store and when Finding Nemo came out everybody wanted to put Nemo in a goldfish tank 
and Nemo does not belong in a goldfish tank. Actually, most fish, no fish belongs in a goldfish tank. I don't care what people say, they just don't, right? Okay. But they wanted to put a saltwater fish in, in freshwater in a goldfish tank. That's what most mothers wanted to do for their, their daughters or sons. When mm -hmm. they would come to me asking me to, because they wanted, or when they would come to me and ask, hey, I want to get a Nemo, because they didn't even know what the fish was. It was a clownfish, but they didn't know what it was. They just called it Nemo. Right. And I... I talked to one of the reporters and said, I really want to do an article on Finding Dory and what the Dory fish is and why people shouldn't buy it because I remember this during Nemo and everybody wanted a clownfish. Now everybody's going to want a blue tang and a blue tang is a much bigger fish than a clownfish. It is a fish that grows nearly a foot long and requires a fish tank that's at least six feet long. Wow. And nobody, no lay person who's going to come asking to buy Dory is going to have either the money or even have the desire right. to have a fish tank that large to house a fish like that. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up writing an article on Dor the dory fish and what it was and alternatives to the dory fish and things like that. And I ended up getting on Huffington Post. That was, that was like one of my first digital PR experiences. Okay. That's a nice one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I believe you got a backlink to Reddit. Yes, I did. Tell us, tell us about that one. Uh, I was fr I'm friends with one of the admins on the aquarium reddit subreddit okay and at the time I asked if they wanted something specific for their sticky post and they said yeah we really want a list of um, aquariums and or sorry aquarium societies in the US because people are curious where they all are and so I just wrote an entire list of them all over the country and said well is this gonna work and they're like yeah that works perfectly and I've had that I've had that subreddit post for ages. Very nice. That's yeah. a great idea. Some sort of directory on Reddit, no? Yes. Mm. Very nice. Um, very creative. Um, so you said a little bit about Flowdesk is one of the tools you use. You used Ahrefs. Are there any other tools that kind of you absolutely need to keep your business running? Uh, Surfer would be another one. It's Surfer. really good. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. good for um, on-page optimization. Right. Uh, on-page AI has been a really good one. Um, I think on-page AI will save you from algorithm hits. Okay. And that's a tool why, why that a lot that? of you don't look into. They look into um, like header spam and keyword spam. Mm -hmm. So S Surfer SEO can get you optimized, mm -hmm. but it can also get you in trouble with the new algorithm changes, and on-page AI prevents you from getting into trouble with the algorithm. Okay. So that's another one. All right. Any other tools that you use that you can recommend, you recommend to other entrepreneurs? Let me see what else do I use. I mean, I, I use Asana to manage a lot of my VAs. Okay. Um, so I don't I don't email them or work exclusively through Upwork or whatnot. I, it's all through it's all through Asana. I just add people when I need stuff. I know other people have used Discord, but I don't really use Discord for business right now because I don't know. It's, it's 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 it'd be too much, and I don't think most VAs would be down for using it. So we just use okay. Asana. All right. Uh, can you tell us about your uh, biggest challenge as an entrepreneur? The biggest challenge? Hmm. I can't think of one right now. I, I, I think the biggest one is probably jumping into new ventures. Because at some point, at some point in a blog, e either one or two things happen. Either you want to, or you, you start writing out things to write, because you've covered almost everything. Mm -hmm. Or your site starts hitting a cap on how much money you can make, which I still have it on the site, which is, I'm surprised. I, I always thought to myself, there's no way an aquarium site is going to make this much money. I thought to myself, well, maybe an aquarium site at most makes 3K a month. Like, there's no way it's going to make as much as it did. And now it's, at, right. now it's at over 20. I said, there's no way in hell it should make this much. Yeah, especially it's it's so niche, right? It's so I mean, niche, it's, right. And there's so much traffic. Yeah. Do, but you, I guess do you think, it you've, I do guess think it you, makes, can, you can... Um, sorry, increase your earnings beyond 20k? Or? Oh yeah, it definitely could. Yeah, yeah. Okay. especially with YouTube because there's right. some there's some sponsors and even though I, I have, I've never taken a sponsorship, that's like one of the things on my site that I always talk about. Is like I don't take any sponsorship, so I can I, I'm at liberty to talk bad or good about any product that I feel like because I don't have sponsorships, which is actually right. most affiliates have the same thing too, which is the difference between a lot of content sites versus a YouTube creator. A YouTube creator relies a lot on sponsorships, right? But a content site, we can talk, we can say anything about a product. Mm -hmm. If we want to say a product's bad, I, I can say a product's bad. But the funny thing is that a lot of affiliate 
marketers don't talk bad about products. Yeah. And I actually have talked bad about products on my website, which is rare. Mm -hmm. uh, there's ways to do it. There's ways to talk bad about a product or just say it's not the best rather than just say everything's good and hope everyone buys it, which is what yes. I usually see from content yes. marketers. Of course. Um, but I have no issues saying a product's bad. I have okay. no issues saying, especially on the, especially on, um, I, I've done it before. I, I've gone on, I've gone on my soapbox on a few review posts that I've done where I said, Hey, especially for freshwater, I always say like German and Italians are the best for when it comes to freshwater equipment. And if you want to go cheap, you can go buy something from China, but just know it's probably not going to last and it's probably going to be really bad. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm oftentimes conflicted on the saltwater industry because I always say in my blog that the freshwater industry gets the best equipment because the best equipment in freshwater is all made in Germany and Italy. But saltwater still isn't like that. Even the best lights you can buy are still made in China, which is mm -hmm. just crazy to me. Yeah. Like we still do not have... German made equipment or Italian made equipment for the most part in saltwater, the most popular stuff is still made in China, which is weird when you think about the freshwater side where um, you don't even deal with saltwater corrosion and whatnot, but you have these products that have been engineered for years in Italy and Germany that are extremely reliable. Mm -hmm. um, I have discussions even on my blog and no, no real content marketer talks about this in my space because I, I know the industry. I even talk about... The history of like the Ascoro motor, which is a motor that's used in uh, return pumps, and I would talk about how that motor really perfected um, the Eheim and, and Higgin brand, like many many years ago. That that motor is Italian made and lasts forever. Like, you will have aquarium some return pumps last for twenty plus years, and people are still using them, and they they run twenty four seven, and nothing's wrong with them. And then when DC motors came about, well, all the DC motors were made in China because they're cheap. Mm -hmm. And they have three points of failures, whereas an AC, an AC return pump has one. And it really wasn't until we had a true Italian-made DC pump that DC pumps were reliable. And, of course, the first manufacturer who did this was Cice. And Cice has always been the one of the big iron clan reliable return pumps in the saltwater industry and they make all their products in Italy and when that happened I was all over the moon about that so everybody needs to buy a CCA pump if you're gonna buy a DC pump and this is just stuff that no lay affiliate marketer talks about in of my industry course. like I actually know this stuff and yeah other people don't that's abundantly clear yeah. and that's probably part of the reason for your success if not probably a major part of the reason for your success because you know the industry inside and out, and that probably shows across your website. Yeah. Yeah. Nice strategy, Mark. <laughs> um, so what? last question for you. What advice would you give to other entrepreneurs? If they're going to start something like I'm going to do? Yeah. Right? Do something that you actually love or you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. I've had people before contact me for mentorship, and it's pretty common, which is why I'm thinking about doing more course creation nowadays. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I get a lot of people, people will contact me and say, hey, I want to start an affiliate blog. I, I, I want to start it on tech or something like that. And I said, well, do you really have interest in that? And the first thing they usually tell me is, no, not really, but I think I can make a lot of money. And so I'd stop them right there and I said, okay, so you want to do something because it makes a lot of money. You have no real incentive other than you just want to make a lot of money. And they said, yes, that's correct. And I said, you picked the wrong niche then. And they would say, well, why not? It's going to make a lot of money. So that's fine, but but know that that's the only thing you're going to write for probably the next two years while you're growing. Mm -hmm. And do you really just want to write about something that you don't care about or have no interest in learning or have no desire to actually become an expert in the space? You're right. just going to go hire some guy in Upwork and just hope that he's the best writer for you? That doesn't sound very healthy for a long-term prospect. Mm-hmm. Because the way I see it now, especially, especially with affiliate marketing, with all these things in Google, in going on Google, is that Google is really pushing content creators to be influencers. That's what they want at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. that's what they feel are going to be most trustful, trustworthy. So if you're not going the influencer route, which means you become an expert in the face on camera and whatnot, you're probably long term going to fail in affiliate marketing. Or that, or you just have so many expert writers 
where it doesn't matter, but then you're also paying a lot more for content. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Or you're paying, or you're paying people to sign off on your website, like a, like you get a veterinarian or something like that. Right. Which is what I've seen some competitors do. Yeah, I've seen that as well. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's great advice. That's really good advice. Yeah. I, um, I've had definitely. people before I've mentored. Um, I sit people down, and this is why I'm thinking about doing a lot more coaching nowadays. Because I mm -hmm. think to myself, I'm like, well, I actually, I actually make money online. Like, I should be able to coach people because some of the advertisements I see on YouTube, they don't even make as much as I do. But then they're calling mm -hmm. themselves expert experts, and I tell myself, well, I make more than them. So maybe I actually have some to offer. For a while, I told myself, there's no way I can. Like, I don't make that much. But then I see these people who make only 4K a month advertise courses. And I said, okay, so I make more. I make five times more than them. I should probably do something. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and um, I, and I've, I've done it before. I've done it for free. And I talked to one guy, and, he, and I said, so what's your passion? And he's like, I don't really have any passions. I said, so what do you, what do you like to do for fun? He's like, oh, I just like to play video games. And I, I, I can be very blunt. And I, 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 I talked to him. I said, okay, I'm going to be very blunt here. But you need to go have a life and make a life before you actually decide to do something as a business. Because if you're just playing video games all day, unless your goal is to be a Twitch streamer, mm -hmm. then there's no real prospects for you to write anything on the blogosphere. Because it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like you have any other passions other than you like to play video games and watch TV. Right. I've just been very blunt like that. Right. Well, that's probably good advice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, having built your aquarium empire as you have, I'm, I'm sure you're definitely in, in a space to kind of help others. And that would be great diversification yeah. for you to kind of uh, branch out into that. Yeah. It's going to be interesting when I do it because I'm probably going to make another website and I'm probably going to have to talk to every digital PR website or every digital PR outreach link that I've gotten, reach mm -hmm. out to all of them and said, hey, I'm doing a personal brand too. Can you link to my personal brand now? Mm -hmm. So it's almost going to be like a reclamation link building project when it happens. Okay. Look at that strategy. Yeah. Very nice. Um, fantastic. Super interesting, Mark. Thank you so much for coming on and telling us about Aquarium Store Depot and your projects and your success. And um, it's been really interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey everyone, it's Spencer Hawes here, founder of the Niche Pursuits podcast. So I recently read a Twitter thread asking about the most underrated strategy in SEO. One of the most common answers given was internal link building. The reason? Well, sometimes people put so much emphasis on external links, they forget that not only do internal links provide relevancy and SEO benefits, but that Google actually encourages you to build internal links. Now I get it, building internal links can often feel time consuming and boring. And that's why I created Link Whisper. Link Whisper is a powerful WordPress plugin that makes building internal links so much faster and easier. You can quickly get relevant internal link suggestions as you write, and with the simple check of a box, add one or multiple internal links to your articles. And perhaps my favorite time saver is the ability to see how many internal links all my articles have and to quickly get new internal link suggestions to articles I want to boost in Google. With comprehensive internal link reporting and the ability to add links with the simple check of a box, I can't even imagine going back to building internal links manually. Link Whisper is by far the most powerful, effective, and easiest to use internal link building tool out there. Give it a try, and if you don't agree, I'll give you your money back, no questions asked. In fact, for podcast listeners only, I'm offering a $15 off discount. Just go to linkwhisper.com and use discount code PODCAST at checkout to save $15. So as the creator of Link Whisper, I might be a little biased, but I highly recommend that you head over to linkwhisper.com today to check it out. Again, that's linkwhisper.com, and be sure to use discount code PODCAST at checkout. Thanks again.